What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So before we get going too quick here, I wanna let you know that I have a free winterizing guide or a free guide to winterizing your lawn or lawn winterizers. So many questions coming in this time of year about that. So I've got a free guide you can click below. It's immediately download PDF. You can check that out. It's all my opinions and recommendations when it comes to winterizing your lawn, both cool and warm season lawn. So here's how we're looking about a week after the flagship application. And uh, I'm real happy with where we're at. St. Aug hasn't had any nitrogen in a while, so always nice to see that. I think we're gonna dominate a little bit harder than we are. This time of year, results happen just a little bit slower, and that's part of what we're talking about today. Come back from this angle, it looks pretty good too. This is with the sun behind me. I like the way that looks. Maybe, maybe a little bit better. Either way, my grace, it's beautiful. I mean, just look at these beauties. They're just, they're so chubby and beautiful. How do you not love that? Look at it. It's grabbing sunlight, reaching tall. Might as well just go right in on it. So what's gonna start happening is you're gonna, a lot of you guys are gonna start noticing that some of your grass is growing and some of it is not. You see that? You're also gonna notice that you're gonna start getting a lot of these and you're gonna think you're diseased but you're not. So we always have to kind of review this every single year because the growth habit of St. Augustine grass is just so different. So those of you who have seen this before, you'll be fine for the rest of you. Let's check this out. Let's see why do we have some dead stuff, some stuff that's not growing, and then obviously some stuff that is growing. Let's see what we can find here. Come on, big fella. Gonna have to take one for the team here. Okay, so there it is. This is called a stolen, and this is how St. Augustine grass takes ground. There are thousands of these out in the lawn, all running around like that. This is what I call the business end. This is what is growing and moving and taking ground. And every time it moves a few inches, it creates what is called a node. And so each place where you see growth here, these are nodes. I don't know why there's a patch missing right there. Maybe when I ripped it out of the ground or something, maybe it got injured, doesn't matter. But you can see these are all nodes. And so what you'll find is this end is newer growth and this end is older growth. So one thing that does start to happen is you can see how the new growth, see how everything on there is green, but then you come back here to the older growth, see how some of these are sloughing off. That's just natural, that's just normally what happens. The older growth, these even here, these are starting to slough off some blades, you see that? So that's why you're gonna see dead grass blades in there. This is just the nature of this grass, especially as we start heading into winter and we get shorter days, it's kinda telling the grass to slow down, not be so aggressive. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna start sloughing these down, getting prepared for winter. Some of you, like in Texas, you'll go dormant, all of this will turn brown. And then the next spring, not all of it will be green again, just maybe some of the edges here, the ends here, where it starts to go. And that's why it feels like the St. Augustine will thin out going towards the fall and the winter. It literally is. It's just kind of backing itself down. So always just remember that, that it's very natural for the sloughing. It's very natural to see some of these grass blades falling off like this, as well as some not growing while others are. It's just the nature of our grass here, St. Augustine. So you might notice similar patterns from other plants in your landscape this time of year. If you have these tea plants like I do right here, these will also, they've, they've been growing all year long here during the, the rainy season. They've been growing more. You'll see they, they send out these, you know, and all this kind of stuff. I don't know what to call these pups. Whoops. You could actually plant that and it would grow. Anyway, but what happens is when they get towards the same time of the year, all these younger ones down here, they start to slough. See how they're sloughing all of this bottom growth? This top growth up here, this is going to stay nice. I need to prune these out anyway. But see, that's going to stay nice, but they're sloughing all of this bottom growth. Super messy. And anybody that has these knows this time of the year, you got to constantly clean these up. But that's doing the same thing the grass is doing. It spent all this time growing, growing, growing. Now it's going to go ahead and preserve its nice fresh growth and slough off all the stuff towards the bottom. Very similar to what the grass does. So based on its growth habit, you can't expect this grass type to perform like Maybe some of your cool season friends that have perennial rye or turf type tall fescue, which are bunching grasses, this is not that. So when you look down in it, what happens is people will go, oh my gosh, 
only some of my grass blades are growing. That's because you're seeing it from your house, but this is what your neighbors see right here, right? It's beautiful. So if that matters to you, I just want you to know everybody's looks kind of ugly when you look straight down on it and up close. You have to look at St. Augustine for its beauty, which is that side view, you know, where you can see that beautiful chubby silhouette. That's how you got to look at St. Augustine grass. So part of it is just really beauty being in the eye of the beholder. But I know you guys really just want to know, well, Al, what, what kind of fertilizer should I use? And so when it comes to that, there's two classifications of St. Augustine. There are folks whose St. Augustine is going to go dormant sometime here coming up in the late fall or winter. And there are those of us whose St. Augustine does not go dormant. For the most part, Southern California and South Florida, you're not gonna go dormant. All the rest of you will go dormant, and that's gonna change up the strategy. So for those of you who don't go dormant, South Florida, typically south of Interstate 4, and Southern California, and I don't wanna forget you folks in Texas, maybe there's a couple two or three you way down there low in Southern Texas that don't go dormant, but if you don't go dormant, you can keep pushing nitrogen. However, you want something that's got some slow release in it, as well as some immediate release. However, if your St. Augustine is gonna go dormant, which is the majority of Texas, Panhandle of Florida, all through there, you wanna to go to higher potash, but you can still give a little nitrogen, just make sure it's all slow release. Now that you know what to apply, the next question that comes up is how often? And in my programs, I typically recommend you apply your chosen fertilizer every four or five weeks or so. So if you're sitting on St. Augustine grass right now and you haven't given it fertilizer in a while, I'll give you a couple links below depending on which situation you're in. If you're not sure how that works, uh, I'd like to invite you to download my app. It'll tell you exactly what to put down, when to put it down based on soil temperatures, as well as it will talk to you about when to put your winterizer down. Again, I mentioned that free guide earlier in the video. Well, the app actually goes along with that and will tell you no matter what your grass type is, now is the time for your winterizer and here's a good choice for it. I did want to show an update on the weeds that I sprayed. Look at this, this is so crazy. This is that day flower and it is just cooked. This was from the blind side. So that is all dead day flower, just cooked in there. And uh, it was so thick, it's actually taken out some of the grass because I allowed it to get so thick. So that's not good. Um, we do have some green coming back in here. This is one of the challenges with this weed control is it works so fast, it doesn't get all the way through a mature plant. See how some of that's not affected? It's just because it moves so fast and then it just dies out and uh, it doesn't get through the entire plant. So I may have to spray again, but that's one of the woes to allowing something like that in there. It actually did outcompete the St. Augustine grass. You can see these brown spots. That's actually dead weeds, but then there's a thin spot that's left. Look at that. Terrible. And speaking of that, I'll show you some more weeds dead in a minute, but this year, the wild Bermuda has really invaded my front lawn this year. More than ever. Look at how thick that is. Now, this is a thick spot, but it's gotten everywhere now. See, it's everywhere in here now. I told you a couple years ago, I think I had this resotted, what, three years ago? I said that's about what you get is three years and then back comes the wild Bermuda. It's all in here, look at that. So guys, it's just one of those things, right? You don't, there is no recourse for it. The wild Bermuda is gonna continue to invade. We've talked about Pro Vista before, but that's that requires a resod. So anyway, let's look at some more weeds, why not? So here are, and by the way, these Cycads, man, I let the scale get away from me. I got to prune them. That's the biggest thing. I don't even want to talk about that. But anyway, this is mature dove weed. And you can see it's scorched. But it's going to need another app. Again, because this blind side moves so fast that it just goes wham and the, the weed just comes back. Because it burns itself out. Maybe I should try Celsius back to back. Like do my next app with Celsius maybe. But we do have damage. So that's good. You can see this whole area is thin. This is supposed to be St. Augustine grass and uh, wild Bermuda coming in. I know all you guys think I have this perfect lawn. Well, I'm showing you. Not perfect, especially after the rainy season. Stuff gets away from me big time, just like it does everybody. This is another thing that happens during the rainy season. These bougainvillea get away from me big time. By the way, speaking of the rainy season, one of the things I always warn folks about in Florida here, especially was when we move out of the rainy season and into what I call the dry season, which is now, there's gonna be times when you're gonna have stretches where there's no rain, and if you're not prepared for that, your, your grass will have like a hangover and it can go dormant quick. 
because it's spoiled from all the rain. I don't know if you guys remember, but there's a spot over by my office that I always use as kind of like my barometer because it's an area that dries out. Check this out, after five days with no rain. All right, well, here we are back. I did a video on this back in the spring when we were going through what I was calling a drought. So I'll link up there to that. But here we are again, I can stress test, or I can see what the stress test is on grass by using this area here, which is where I work. Our warehouse is up over there, but I've been saying this before, and I'll say it again. Once we get out of the rainy season, we have our first dry spell, which we're in, six days with no rain. People don't get their irrigation adjusted quick enough, and areas check out, and you can see them. All that, and these are the same areas that checked out during what I was calling the drought in the spring as well. Now, some of this in here is just, um, you know, mower scalpage or whatever, but not scalpage, just St. Aug don't always cut well. Let's just say it that way, you know, as it gets into the season. But you can see, look at that, bam. There's another one up there where it's just checking out. See that? You can see it. Plain as day, right there. So. That is the warning, my friends in Florida. The rainy season is over. We're still gonna get rain here and there, but the rain every single day, all day, that's over. You're gonna have to get your irrigation in line immediately. So basically the warning here or the tip is, get on top of your irrigation now. We actually just got more rain this weekend, so that five or six days where lawns started to struggle, they come back. You can call that a lucky break. Let that be a lesson to you though. If you haven't gotten out and got your irrigation straight, uh, you know, if your heads are if your heads are buried, dig them out. Uh, check and make sure everything's running. Make sure everything is getting good coverage. No heads got kicked or moved, and they're spraying the street instead of the lawn. Go through all of these things right now, and make sure that you are ready to work. Because I'm telling you, so many people that live here in Florida, at least, they're from up north, and when the fall comes, they stop all work. But that's not what we do here. Actually, the fall is a time when we need to make sure we're on top of things, probably more than ever. Especially if you're below I-4 again, where we go, where we don't go dormant.